you have to leave, I won't be offended. <laughs> You'll get to hear me next week. <laughs> and the week up. Let's bow and pray, shall we? Father God, I thank you that we can shout your name and honour you and glorify you here in this place. Thank you for the prayers that are offered and the songs that are sung and the messages that we receive. Lord God, speak to our hearts and minds, we pray. Father, thank you for all that you do in us and through us and around us. May our eyes and ears not miss it. Thank you, God, that you call us, that you draw us to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. So good morning, yes. Morning. Yes, good. <laughs> thank you, yes. I extend my thanks to you all. Thank you for, and so do our mobile mission maintenance men. Uh, they were very pleased how the church was packed up. They were very thankful for the yummy food that they got to eat. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I happened to enjoy a little bit of that during the week, I will confess. <laughs> um, and thank you for making the church look great and we're not out under the trees. So thank you for that. We even have a clock that's sort of working. We have, I heard a funny story. Clocks do not work in this building. The, the ones you put on the walls. We don't know why, but they don't. And, you can ask Ron and Carolyn about that, and many others have testified to me that clocks don't like our walls. So we're trying the cupboard now, so we'll see how that goes. So, so we'll see how that all works. But thank you, thank you. Thursday, if you're part of our uh, NBCM uh, food hampers, help do that, help give out that. Thursday after we give out hampers down at Rivers, there is a thank you lunch. Uh, that will be about 11.30. Uh, NBCM's paying for that, so there's no cost to you. But if you're part of our food hamper crew this year, and want to, we just want to say thank you, and so uh, we have a lunch for volunteers and people that help make that happen. So that's Thursday, about 11:30ish. That's always hard to gauge, but but yeah, Rivers Church of Christ, 128 Street, Plano. If you want to come and join me for lunch, that would be lovely. And we want to just say thank you for all the work that our volunteers do across two campuses now, Rivers and here. Who knows where we'll end up next year. Yeah. We'll see how that all goes, but that's very good. So thank you for that. And also uh, about 11-ish, we'll have a committee meeting downstairs in the Sunday school room for those that are part of our church committee. So thank you. That's all my little bits. So today we're starting a short uh, three-week message focus around the topic of we are. Isn't that nice? We are invited is this week and we are invaluable next week. So, and then there'll be something else we are when I decide what we're doing. So, <laughs> you'll be, wait and see. Watch this space. Watch this space. Our Bible text, Luke chapter 7, verse 37. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. Have you ever felt unwelcome? Have you ever felt overlooked? Not included? Not invited? Just missed out? Forgotten? A number of years ago, uh, uh, some of you know that we were at a Baptist church in Launceston, and it was when uh, social media was getting very popular, and so we were befriending different people in our new church, as you would, and, and being friends with them, and they were being friends with us, and, and Noel and I started to notice over the sort of months and weeks, oh, so-and-so had a 40th birthday, isn't that a lovely photo? And there were all these new people that we'd met, or there was some function on it, oh, look, there's so-and-so, and there's Norell, and there's Colin, and there's oh, all these lovely people we'd met, and... But we weren't there. We weren't at the photos. And we'll get to church on Sunday and they'll tell us, what a lovely time they had at so-and-so's 40th birthday. Yes, we know. We saw the photos. And, <laughs> yes. Have you ever felt unwelcome? Have you ever felt uninvited? <laughs> what did you do on the weekend? Nothing. It would have been nice to be included. In today's passage, someone shows up who was not invited and not welcome. A woman who had lived a sinful life. Now, friends, that's code for prostitute. Um, plain and simple. She turns up at a Pharisee's house because she heard that Jesus was there. You can imagine the whispers. Why is, this, why is she here? She wasn't invited. She's unclean. She's not welcome. She's unworthy. 
She's not one of us. Imagine the chatter, imagine the whispers that went on that day. Hear this truth this morning. Jesus invites the people others reject. The ones who might be overlooked, those people who are looked down upon by others, Jesus invites you and Jesus invites me. Now the Pharisees love to gather and they love to have these parties and they would discuss theology and politics and culture and all sort of very interesting highfalutin stuff, I'm sure. Now the common people were allowed to gather and listen in these outer courts and to watch the spectacle. It was a form of entertainment for them. As they sh and the sharing of information and the latest trends and ideas. And so into this situation comes Jesus. And into this situation appears a woman with a past and a history and a background who was not invited. And not included. We don't know a lot about this woman. But I'm sure she would not have picked of being a prostitute as a career. As she grew up and... Chatted to her girlfriends and her friends. Oh, what do you want to do in life? Oh, I want to have a few camels. Oh, I want to have a market stall. Oh, I want to be a prostitute. No. Not a career or a path, something she would have chosen. But this was a shameful, dark and degrading path. Whatever her story, she was not welcome, not included, not invited, not wanted. But she walks into this party and into this group and finds Jesus. She falls at his feet before him, holding a, a bottle of expensive perfume. And in Luke 7, 38 we read, As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissing them and pouring the perfume on them. Perfume was very expensive and a very treasured item in New Testament and Bible times. It was quite rare. This perfume would have been her nest egg, her super, her calling card, if you will. In one powerful sacrificial act, she comes and worships Jesus and symbolically is turning away from her sinful life by pouring this perfume out upon Jesus' feet and crying and wiping it with her tears. Saying, I'm not going back to that old life. My past is gone. And I'm offering my best to Jesus. All I have here this day. Pouring out her sorrow. Tears flowing down her cheeks upon his feet. In verse 39 of that chapter we read. When the Pharisee who had invited them, him saw this. He said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who's touching him and what kind of woman she is. That she is a sinner. Basically, if Jesus was a prophet, if he was someone of importance, he would know who this woman is. Then Jesus puts him in his place in Luke 7, 44 to 48. Then he turned towards the woman and said, Simon, do you see this woman? She's not invisible. She's not unwelcome. I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. For whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You are made whole. You are restored. You are forgiven. You are welcome. Your sins are forgiven. Why did she risk so much? 
to be at the feet of Jesus. I can't prove it, but somewhere, somehow, she'd heard about Jesus. Maybe she saw a miracle. Maybe she saw his unconditional love. Maybe she heard stories about him. But she comes and enters this environment that would not have welcomed her. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. We turn over back a few pages to Matthew's Gospel. We have these powerful words in chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Let these words speak to your heart today. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to Jesus. For we are invited. The message for us to hear and that message the woman heard was this. You are invited into God's family. Come to me all of you who are burdened, rejected, full of shame. And find rest and peace for your soul, salvation and hope. Come, come just as you are. Come, come to me when you have lost hope. Come to me, all those who religious people have rejected. Come, come. Come today and bow at the feet of Jesus and receive his love and grace. Come. You are all invited. For he is gentle and humble. For those of you who feel downtrodden, he'll lift you up. It's interesting, pointing out this woman's sins didn't lead her out of her life of sin, did it? Judgment didn't change her lifestyle. Pointing fingers didn't see her set free from her painful past. What changed her was an encounter with Jesus. But Jesus didn't come for the healthy, but the sick, the broken, the doubters, those with questions, those with concerns, those who are hurting and broken. God sent me here this morning with a simple and powerful message. You are loved and invited. For we are all equal at the foot of the cross. We are all equal at the foot of the cross. Up on the screen there. Someone in your life needs to hear that they matter, that they are loved, that they have a future. Be the one to tell them. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how much you've hurt, no matter how ashamed you are, if you've ever doubted, questioned, been disappointed, or wanted to walk away from God, you're still invited, you're still welcome. Come into the family of God. For you are welcome. We welcome you today because Jesus invites. It's there. It's coming. Look. Ah, oh, look at that. Jesus invites the people, others rejected. And we, as a church community, invite people. Because that's what it's all about. For we are invited. And so we then invite others. For Jesus invites the people others reject. God bless you. Amen. Let's stand and sing.